Okay, so this lesson is on VLOOKUPs. VLOOKUPs allow you to search for related information in your spreadsheet or in other spreadsheets. So an example might be you have a name and address in your sheet, but you need phone numbers from a separate sheet, some phone directory somewhere. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is look at the formula, and we want to focus in on those colored items. So there's a lookup value, a table array, and a column index number. In the end, we always put false on it. I'll explain that later, but that's not as important now. So the lookup value is, is you're telling what you're going to search by. So in this case, when you look for a phone number, you're going to search for the customer number, search by the customer number, because that's how you know if you have the right phone number. And the table array is where the what table has the desired data. So in this case, it's your phone list. And the column index number is what column is the desired data in. So in your phone list, the phone number is going to be in the second column. So your column index number is just two. And that's what it would look like. So you've got your lookup value, your table array, which is your phone list, and then your column index number, which is two. Okay, so we are in the um, customer sheet. What we're going to do is take a look at the phone list real quick, just so you can see what that looks like. Basically have customer numbers and then phone numbers. The way that we're going to find the phone number is by that customer number because it's in both sheets. So we'll insert a new column. And we're going to call it phone number. And then in the first blank cell, we're going to start our VLOOKUP formula. And then our lookup value, if you recall, is what we're going to be searching by. And in this case, we're searching by our customer number. So in our current sheet in the customers list, we're going to hit the customer number, the first or the second row there. And then our table array is where our, our desired data is going to be coming from. In this case, it's the phone list. So we'll select both columns in the phone list. You want to select all the data that you might need. And then the column index number, if you recall, is the column that has your desired data in it. So again, we already have the customer number. We're most interested in the phone number. So in this case, the column index number is going to be two. That's really what we want to pull. Type two there, and then we'll put false at the end. And then we'll hit enter. And you'll see the phone number appears for Cornelius. And then we'll use the autofill to let Excel do the rest of the work for us. And you'll see now that the phone numbers are filled out all the way down. What I want you to notice though, is if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see an error that appears. And that's because Carlita, one of our customers, does not have a phone number listed in our phone directory or our phone list. So what we can do to fix that, because we don't want that weird error to appear, is in our, we'll change our VLOOKUP, we'll add something to it. We'll add what we call an if error. We'll put that right now, right after the equal sign. We'll put if error and then a parentheses. And what it's going to do is to check to see if an error appears in that VLOOKUP formula. So we put if error at the beginning, and then right after our VLOOKUP function, we're going to put a comma. And then in quotations, we're going to put what we want Excel to put in each cell if it finds an error. So if it can't find the phone number in our phone list, let's just have it say no number. And it actually fixed my quotation marks there, which is good. So we're sandwiching that if error inside the VLOOKUP function. So we fixed it in the first cell there. And now what we want to do is use our otter fill function to make sure that formula, updated formula, goes all the way down. And now you see that Carlita, it doesn't give us, her number doesn't give an error. It just says no number. Just a, a cleaner way to, to handle it. And again, so we sandwiched the VLOOKUP function inside the if error. We've nested it, as they call it. And now the final thing that we want to do is to select all of our phone numbers, copy them, and actually paste them right where they are. 
and then we'll see a little paste options button appear. And what we're going to do is select paste as values. And the reason why we do this is because we want to get rid of our formulas. We just want to leave the phone numbers because if something was to happen to our phone list that it got removed or deleted, it's going to throw errors for us. So we want to get rid of that formula and just paste it as values. So that's just whatever it returned for us. Forget the formula. We, we don't even need it anymore. We, we've got the phone number and we want to make sure that if something happens to our phone list, that it doesn't uh, in our customer sheet here, give us an error. Now what we're going to do is go to the orders tab. So what we want to do is in the orders tab, pull up product price. We don't have that currently in our orders list right now. It's actually in a separate sheet called the just products. So this tells us unit price by product. So go back to our orders tab and in that unit price field, we're going to start our VLOOKUP formula. And then what we want to search by our lookup value is the product number because that's how we know in the other sheet what price um, we should be pulling in. And then our table array, which is where our desired data is coming from, is over in the product sheet. So we'll go to the product sheet and select both of the columns. And then our column index number, just like in the last example, is going to be two because we don't we don't care about the product number. We don't want to pull that over. We want to pull the unit price over, which is in column two of our table array. And again, we'll enter at the end of this false. And um, I wouldn't worry too much about why we do that. It's just um, to make sure we have an exact match and it's not approximating anything. Okay, so it worked and we'll use the autofill function to pull everything down. And then the final thing that we're going to do is actually change the total cost because now we have the quantity that was sold and the unit price. So we're going to just um, multiply those two. Type equals quantity times unit price. 